live and on your side. You're watching WBRC Fox 6 News at 10. New at 10, a Birmingham man defending his wife. She's a cop and accused of being drunk when she showed up in court to testify. Josh Gann talked with the husband who says those allegations are far from the truth. Yeah, that's right. Jonathan Smith uh, says his wife Velvet Smith was on standby to testify, but was called late in the day and had to rush to court. And within minutes of getting there, she was cuffed and behind bars. It's sickening. That's how Jonathan Smith feels when he reads an order from Circuit Judge Tracy Todd that says his wife, Birmingham police officer Velvet Smith, shows up late, quote, appeared to be intoxicated and disheveled, wearing casual clothes and flip flops when she was called as a witness in a rape case. Judge Todd charged Smith with contempt and had her arrested. It was very upsetting. Uh, this lady, talking about my wife, yeah. been off for 14 years. Served the city of Birmingham respectfully, respectfully and uh, I, I never seen it like that before to do an officer like that right there. And that's my wife. Smith's husband now coming to her defense, saying she wasn't drunk at all. He believes the contempt charge is just retribution for her not showing up on time on her off day. It's uh, all fabricated. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm saying that I was there. I, was, I seen it. It's all a lie. These are false allegations towards my wife, period. I think there was a lot of misunderstanding from the judge. It, it f***ed all because she didn't get, it, get there in time fashion on their behalf. So it really is pushing the issue right now. Smith says he also saw other cops making fun of his wife when they walked into court. He's now trying to keep his wife's reputation intact. This lady is a loving mom, loving wife and sister and respected to all the community uh, what she brought up in. Now we try getting more information from Birmingham police. They sent us a statement instead, a spokesperson telling us it is our uh, goal as a department to serve with ethics, effort and excellence. No other standard will be tolerated or accepted. Smith is still uh, on the job. She has been reassigned uh, off the patrol division for now. We're in the newsroom tonight. I'm Josh Scan, WBRC Fox 6 News on our side. Thanks, Josh. Etowah County investigators looking for the person who shot a man that they had charged yesterday with sexual extortion. 23-year-old Dustin Lee Gibbs was released on bail this morning and was shot around 7 this evening while walking near Highway 431 north of Duck Springs Road. He was flown to Birmingham for treatment. Deputies don't have any information on suspect. Disturbing news out of Tuscaloosa where investigators say a 9-year-old boy is recovering from what they're calling the worst case of child abuse they've ever seen. The child's mother and her boyfriend, they are now in custody. Yugochi Iloka joins us now with more on what police say was done to this child. Janet, authorities say that nine-year-old boy has multiple uh, broken bones. We know he had over a hundred bruises on his back and was malnourished. Now he's in the hospital tonight, but is expected to pull through. Now the child's mom, uh, the child's mom, um, officers say was arrested, Cecily Burton and her boyfriend, Marzell Mills. Investigators say a relative called police after noticing something was wrong with the child. They also say the boy had been withdrawn from school and was kept away from other family members for about eight months. One of the detectives told me this is the most horrific child abuse abuse case he has seen in his 20 year law enforcement career. You know, one of the sad things was uh, when they transferred him up there, he asked, are they gonna be able to let me eat up there? You know, I mean, that, that's, that's heartbreaking uh, when you hear somebody say something like that in a situation like this, that's, you know, especially somebody that's nine years old, defenseless child. Yeah, and Burton and Mills are both charged with attempted murder and aggravated child abuse. Reporting live in Tuscaloosa, Ugo Chialoka, WBRC, Fox 6 News on your side. Thank you, Ugochi. Oh, we've learned the teen acquitted in the murder of Iraq war veteran Mike Gelati faces a rape charge now. The DA's office says Charleston Wells attacked a woman in September of 2015. The 21-year-old could not identify her attacker at the time, but DNA was collected then. And this morning, Bessemer police report a match with DNA collected from Wells in jail. Wells also faces charges of armed robbery in Pelham. In Birmingham, a welfare check ended with police finding a woman's decomposed body inside her burned out home. Officers say neighbors had not seen the woman in about a month. Her house on 4th Terrace West caught fire some time ago. 
but despite significant damage, police say she continued to live there inside the damaged home. Police are still working to positively identify her body. Well, tonight, a Robin Wood man in jail accused of setting a home on fire in late July. Witnesses say they saw Jesse Leslie running from a home on 10th Street just before the fire broke out. No one was home at the time and no one was hurt. Leslie is charged with second degree arson. Bullet holes and broken windows in this video that you'll only see here on WBRC Fox 6. Brighton police say this is what's left after someone fired a weapon at one house at least five times in the past few months. The latest incident this morning and in some cases up to 40 rounds were fired. The elderly man who lives in the home has not been shot, but neighbors are still very concerned. That's sad. Say obvious that they got the wrong house. They shouldn't be doing it anyway. But obviously they shooting up in this man's house, it, it's sad. Authorities say the man is in his 70s and needs an oxygen tank to help him breathe. Let's change gears, look at your weather and find out if you'll need to black out any rain as we take the weekend to prepare for Monday's eclipse. JP, with a first yeah. look at the forecast. Yeah, you know, Steve, I, I think we'll dodge most of the rain this weekend. We could see just a little bit of that rain popping up in the forecast as we make our way into tomorrow afternoon. Areas west of I-65, 75 degrees current temperature at the gallery of 459 and Highway 31. So the uh, forecast looking pretty good out there as we check out the view from the gallery at 7 a.m., 72 two degrees, no rain to talk about 89 at lunchtime and by 3 p.m. There's that 30% chance of rain tomorrow. High of 93. It looks like some drier days ahead. We'll talk about that. Plus your seven day forecast in just a few minutes. Thanks, JP. Well, state lawmakers expect the Confederate monuments, including the one at Lynn Park, to be a major topic during next year's legislative session. State Representative John Rogers says he and the Legislative Black Caucus, they want to make repealing that Memorial Preservation Act a top priority. Rogers says he's introducing a bill to separate the birthdays of Martin Luther King and Robert E. Lee. Why not take Robert E. Lee's birthday and put it on Confederate Memorial Day? Leave King's birthday alone because of the fact that he is a national holiday. Well, earlier this week, Attorney General Steve Marshall sued the city and Birmingham Mayor William Bell over the covering up of the monument at Lynn Park. Marshall told us covering the monument breaks the law. Now, meanwhile, Virginia's governor has signed an executive order temporarily banning any public demonstrations at the Robert E. Lee statue in Charlottesville. That was the statue at the center of the protest that turned deadly violent this past weekend. Also, the mayor of Charlottesville is asking the governor to call an emergency meeting of state lawmakers to allow the city to remove that statue. The governor has not responded to the request yet. New video tonight of a man in Philadelphia as he is spray painting the words black power on the statue of former mayor Frank Rizzo. Rizzo has long been criticized for his volatile relationships with African Americans during the 70s. The man spray painting was arrested. It's unclear what charges he could face. The latest on yesterday's terror attack in Barcelona. Police say they've searched two buses connected to the attack, but they don't know. We don't know if they found any useful information. Also tonight, new video of the attack. If you look at the screen, the top of your screen, you can see a van speeding by. A closer look shows a woman pushing a stroller, narrowly escaping. The attack killed 13 people and injured several more. A man in Macala who had, had just arrived in Spain before the attack is calling it surreal. Lenny Thompson and a friend are on vacation and were on their first tour when they saw, uh, saw people running through a popular square. It didn't dawn on me until after we were informed that it was going on. Because at the time that it happened, we just ran for safety. It was like, hey, if they're running, we need to run too. We need to get away from what they're getting away from. So uh, it's the only thing that goes to your mind in the moment of it. Thompson says he and his friend needed about five hours to get back to their hotel because the entire area was closed off. Well, tonight we're on your side with a warning after police say a Mississippi real estate agent was held against her will by a man who tried to sexually assault her. We talked with Tuscaloosa County Sheriff Ron Abernathy. He was a guest speaker this week for the Tuscaloosa Association of Realtors. He says since there is, uh, so, there are so many uh, women realtors who work on their own, they must know how to protect themselves. If something happens that you have an escape plan in place because the time to plan is not when the event is happening. 
The sheriff stressed that strategies like standing between an exit and who they are showing to in case they may have to get away from them. Show ahead tonight. See why some school leaders in Tuscaloosa say now is the time for teachers to get pay raises. And the eclipse in your smartphone. There's debate about what Monday's big event could do to your phone if you try to take a picture or on your side to sort that out. Well, out of our Tuscaloosa newsroom tonight, the Tuscaloosa City School Board is considering giving all employees a 1% pay raise. So why now? The school district researched other school districts in Jefferson and Shelby counties and found that they pay their teachers significantly more. The executive director of the Human Resources Department says they have a five-year plan to increase employee salaries by a total of 7%. For the work they do day in and day out, they're in the classrooms, they're doing the work in the classrooms with our children and preparing them for success. So we will make sure they're compensated fairly as well. If the board votes to approve the pay raise next month, the HR director says it would go into effect by October. Birmingham is looking to add four more entertainment districts in the city. With so much success with the Uptown Entertainment District, several areas are interested. Our Hannah Ward's been checking it out and uh, shows us the process it takes to get there. Hannah? Well, it's definitely not a walk in the park. Now, all of those businesses that are interested in participating that are in that area have to agree on becoming an entertainment district. Now, the restaurants and bars participating could have to ramp up security and put in some barriers, but when it comes to increased traffic and revenue, the city says the good definitely outweighs the bad. It's going to be a great uh, ad advantage for them to have this type of district, but you have to make sure that they uh, understand the rules and the regulations and the ordinances and what the requirements will be as you uh, and the responsibility as a business owner to participate in that type of district. The two areas that hope to start that conversation about becoming an entertainment district are the Lakeview area and Five Points South. Exciting stuff. Janet. A traffic heads up for you. Aldot has closed two ramps on I-459 and they'll be closed all weekend. The ramp from I-59 to I-459 in Trustville is closed in both directions. Crews are repairing pavement on the southbound side. They also have the northbound ramp closed to allow work to be performed. It's a mess. The ramps should be reopened, however, no later than 5 Monday morning. Tonight, Steve Bannon is back as executive chairman of Breitbart News after being pushed out of the Trump administration. By the way, Bannon says he's already led an editorial meeting earlier this evening. Bannon left Breitbart just over a year ago to join Donald Trump's presidential campaign. Trump is said to have gotten frustrated at the reputation Bannon developed as the real power in the White House. But some Republicans say he's been treated unfairly. I just feel like uh, Steve Bannon, especially... Uh, what we've seen over the course of, uh, since last year's campaign, getting a very bad rap, characterizing him as a racist and whatnot, just, uh, just not accurate. Also today, uh, today, billionaire investor Carl Icahn stepped down as special advisor to President Trump on regulatory reform. Democrats have criticized Icahn, saying his advisory role created a conflict of interest because he had not taken a formal government job and was still running his business. New tonight, the California Department of Corrections releasing a new mugshot of 82-year-old uh, killer and cult leader Charles Manson. Look at this, this photo. It was taken Monday. It shows Manson with significantly less hair than in years past. Manson is serving multiple life sentences for three first-degree murder convictions and conspiracy to commit murder in the deaths of seven people. That included pregnant actress Sharon Tate. Check this out. It's a pop-up museum dedicated to O.J. Simpson in Los Angeles. It covers everything from the murder of his wife to his football career. Outside, there's a white Bronco SUV, just like the one in that infamous police chase. It's part of this traveling exhibit that will only be in L.A. for five days. With the total solar eclipse just a couple of days away, there's plenty of talk about protecting your eyes. But do you need to protect your smartphone or camera? The uh, research uh, seems to be split in part because cell phones did not really exist during the most recent total eclipse. NASA experts say if you do want to take pictures, you should put a filter over your phone's camera. But Apple told USA Today that iPhone lenses are so small they probably won't be affected. Still, though, those who repair smartphones say, why take the risk? You should actually take a minute and actually see what's actually what's going on and not worry about taking a picture because there's professional uh, photographers out there that are going to take a really good clean ca camera shot. NASA has about 12 pages of tips 
uh, about how to take pictures of the eclipse, we've posted a link on our WBRC News app. By the way, a lot of people still trying to get uh, glasses to watch the eclipse, and a lot of stores running short of those glasses. This is the line from a few hours ago at the Mary Carter Hardware Store in downtown Cullman. Folks there were allowed to buy five pairs at a time. All right, I've got mine. You got yours? No, I, I don't have mine. I, I was going to borrow yours, actually. <laughs> Forget it, buddy. Come on. You know, we, well. we totally missed our business opportunity. Uh, we should have become we should a, have uh, an Eclipse glasses vendor, and uh, we probably yeah. would have been doing okay this we week. We could have. Yeah, we could have done WBRC it. WBRC logo in the corner. Yeah, maybe. what is it? Next, right. next time it's like 2050 or something. I'm going to be 80 years old, and I'll be out with my cart selling glasses. <laughs> uh, making a little Write down this idea. Make Eclipse yeah, glasses. Yeah, it'd be my retirement <laughs> fund. Let's go ahead and show you what's going on out there. And... Uh, Eclipse viewing forecast, rain, clouds, and wind. Let's check it out. On Monday, you can see the rain and the clouds, at least according to the data that we have today, is going to be in favor of us seeing the eclipse. It's going to be partly sunny, isolated afternoon thunderstorms. I think the best chance of rain probably after 2 o'clock. That's good news because the peak, at least here, is going to be 1.31 p.m. Let's get right to the radar and no rain to be found across our neck of the woods. The radar is a clean sweep out there right now in Birmingham. Sky vision camera. It's 77 degrees. Dew point coming in at 70. We switch gears. UAB campus. Check it out. Current temperature 77 there as well. Dew point 70 winds are calm looking live at the green. And as we move forward through time, this is the hour by hour forecast. You'll notice the temperature is a little bit cooler off to the east early tomorrow morning. We're talking upper 60s, 73 for Tuscaloosa, 69 for Hamilton, 73 in Clanton. What about those rain chances as we move forward through time? Our future radar showing that possibility in at least a little bit of rain coming in during the afternoon tomorrow. Where's that going to be? You can see that rain starting to develop in Mississippi and then it moves into Marion County and Lamar counties. That's going to be our better opportunity for seeing some wet weather as we get into tomorrow afternoon. So a first alert, Hamilton, Vernon, perhaps even Fayette could see some of that rain drift down into Pickens County as well. So if you're watching in Carrollton or Aliceville, you may see a chance of some showers and thunderstorms. Not the case for the eastern part of the state. It looks to be dry there. So if you're watching in Pell City, you're going to be uh, looking at temperatures in the lower 90s with plenty of sunshine. Partly cloudy tonight. No chance of rain. Northwest winds at about 3 to 5 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and take a look at tomorrow. And we're going to be dealing with some isolated thunderstorms. As I mentioned, that's a 30% chance of rain, mainly west of Interstate 65. Northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Good opportunity tomorrow. Make sure you have the First Alert weather app. We'll be tracking any rain that does develop. And of course, the uh, tropics, we've got a couple of systems down there we're watching. No immediate threats, but we have a, a tropical section there on our weather app that you can check out. 30% chance of rain on Saturday, 10% on Sunday, 30% on Monday. A little bit better chance of scattered storms coming up on Tuesday. And then toward the end of the week, back to some drier weather. Thursday and Friday, those rain chances pretty much non-existent. Thank you very much from Patrick Hollis in Summerton for providing our wonderful seven day forecast background picture. You can submit those photos via our weather app. That's the latest in your forecast and uh, we'll be tracking the weather right on through the weekend. The Independents getting a jump on the high school football season. Sheldon with highlights that count next in sports. You're watching WBRC Fox 6 News, part of the Raycom News Network, Alabama's news source. We're proud to be on your side. New at 5, a Florida mom is talking about the moment an escaped convict tried to hide in her home. Roxanne Vanderveer says she woke up to see Joshua Holmes staring at her, demanding that she help hide him from the Florida deputies that were chasing him. He'd escaped from a work detail at a local landfill in Hernando County the day before. Then I look out my window, I see cops going up and down the street. I'm scared, I'm thinking of my kids. I don't know what to do at this point. Vanderveer said the escapee was frantic and she didn't want to upset him even more, so she texted 911. Eventually, she was able to grab her two children and run from the house. Holmes was found hiding in the family's attic. He actually crashed through the ceiling before deputies captured him. Here is your Benchmark Automotive Sports Report with WBRC's Sheldon Haygood. 
It's the real emotion of people that have, have bought into this and have given their own personal money. I mean, this is, as somebody mentioned, small amounts, big amounts. It's a big deal. UAB and city officials celebrating the ribbon cutting this morning at the Blazers brand spanking new football operations center. Fans and donors getting a tour of the facility and a thank you for all the support to UAB football. You know, the wait is basically over. We can let the fun begin, right? Tonight we have some regular season play in high school football. Independent action with Bessemer Academy playing this evening at Sanford against Evangelical Christian out of Memphis. The home team Rebels get going early. That's Ty Hatcher rolling up and hooking up with uh, Tavish King. That's a nice game. Bessemer Academy finds Pater a few plays later. Austin Clark is the man. Short touchdown run, 7 0 Rebels. Bessemer Academy's defense, not bad either. Xavier Coleman with the interception in the end zone for a touchback. Bessemer Academy gets the W and a big win, 42 to 18. You know, we're one week away from another season to begin for sideline. One week from tonight, Friday, August 25th, 1008 WBRC. It's the 2017 debut of Sideline, the best show around with Carly, JJ, Christina, and yours truly every Friday night during the high school season on Fox 6. And yes, we do call it Sideline, in case you didn't know. Hey, a quick reminder to Auburn fans, tomorrow it is the Tigers' annual fan day. The festivities get going down on the plains at 3.30. In the meantime, former Auburn player John Franklin III makes his debut as a graduate transfer at Florida Atlantic. JF3 set to play for Lane Kiffin and playing at wide receiver, as the video shows during today's practice. Over on the capstone, how about it's hot at the Crimson Tide, holding an afternoon workout. Bama going for two hours or so in shorts, shoulder pads, and helmets. Uh, tomorrow, Nick Saban and the staff will be evaluating again as the tide hold its second scrimmage of preseason camp. At Sanford, the Bulldogs scrimmaging for the final time this fall camp. Chris Hatcher puts his group through 104 plays. He says he uh, saw a lot of positives, including this long touchdown run by freshman Moises Satine. Sanford opens the season in 13 days. How about the Barons' best pitcher has been promoted to AAA Charlotte? Talking about hard throwing Michael Kopech. This season, Kopech leads the Southern League in strikeouts with 155, and he gets set up with a 2.87 ERA. He's pretty good. Barons were pretty good tonight, playing host to the Montgomery Biscuits, and the Barons come away with a 7 4 victory. So they're looking strong down at Regents Field. We'll finish up with something cool. The Memphis Grizzlies off of the NBA, bringing their annual regional caravan to the Magic City area. Guard forward Wayne Selden Jr. was in town to help put on a free youth clinic. You know, my boys usually go over to Memphis to catch a game during the regular season. Mm -hmm. Always a fun trip. So that's what they're trying to do help promote the team. Yeah, Look. Rockets in town yesterday. Where is today? Who knows next week? We could be we could be in NBA. <laughs> we could be. Let's start the rumor. <laughs> no, let's not. We'll be right back. All right, first alert forecast. The weekend is here. 30% chance of rain Saturday, 10% on Sunday. The rain chance, I'll be as specific as I can for tomorrow, mainly western counties. Okay, y'all ready for a weekend? Oh, yes, yeah. Uh -huh. Let's get it started. Big time. How about it? Fox 6 News Saturday morning starts early at 5 a.m. Absolutely, Alabama. Up next, have a great weekend. Download the new WBRC Fox 6 News app today. Sponsored by Dover's Mattress Closeout Center. Save 50 to 75% off name brand mattresses at Dover's Mattress Closeout Center.